Now it happened that as Jesus was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but others say, Elijah, and others that one of the prophets of old has risen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell, to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. It is said that one day when Padre Pio or Saint Pio was celebrating the Eucharist, he was so engrossed in that celebration that he took a long time to celebrate the Eucharist. After the celebration and after the thanksgiving, as he came out of the church, a man retorted or told him, Father Pio, you must not spend such long hours in the Eucharist. Don't you know that others have so many things to be done? You must finish the Mass and go on so that not only you but others can go about their tasks. Saint Pio looked at him and said, My son, the Mass is Mount Calvary here and now made present for us. When you are at the foot of the cross, cr foot of the cross in Mount Calvary, you should not look at your watch. Otherwise, whatever merits that is in store for you, you will lose it. So in future, always remember, when you are at Mass, you are at Mount Calvary made present for you here and now. Adore, worship and love the Lord. St. Pio's spirituality, or Padre Pio's spirituality, came from a profound relationship that he had with the Lord. So much so that while he was spending time in thanksgiving one day after the Eucharist, that he was blessed with the stigmata. And it is also seen that this profound experience that he had with Jesus was translated in his life. So he is known not only for prayer and stigmata, but known also for his charity and love of the poor and love for the poor. So much so that he would, anything that was given to him would all be distributed, be given to the poor in, in caring, them, caring for them and for their integral salvation. Everything was spent for them. And all of this stemmed from a deep and a profound relationship with Jesus. Jesus asks us this morning, who do you say that I am? Where do we stand in our relationship with him? Do we have that deep and a personal communion with him? And do we allow his love to flow not only into us, but we become channels of his love to his brothers and sisters, to our brothers and sisters and to his children? When we enter into that union and communion, we are filled with wisdom. We are filled with grace. We are filled with strength. That gave St. Padre Pio the strength to endure all suffering. Not only bodily suffering, spiritual torments, but also being misunderstood and put aside even by his own confrères. All of that came 
as a result of his union with the Lord. As we enter into union with the Lord, the Lord gives us wisdom and understanding. And the first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes speaks to us about that everything under heaven has a time. When we enter into a union and communion with God, we receive the grace to accept our trials and tribulations with grace. The ability to endure and believe that God is with me in every circumstance, in every situation, and in every trial. And therefore, I am able to believe and to trust in his mercy and in his love for me, especially in the times when things don't go the way I plan to go. As we celebrate this Eucharist, as this word becomes flesh on this altar, let us pray for this grace. Let us pray for the strength of endurance. Let us pray for us grace to persevere in our Christian walk. And the same God who entered so profoundly and deeply in the life of St. Padre Pio may enter into our lives, transform our heart, strengthen us in our life's journey and help us know that he is very near to us. We pray for this grace in this Eucharist. Amen.